North Korea has launched a missile over Japan, sparking anger in Tokyo. It defies a UN Security Council resolution ban on missile launches. The rocket came down in the Pacific Ocean and there are no reports of damage. Stephanie Prentice reports. It's a familiar sight, North Korea testing its missiles, but Monday's launch was different. For the first time since 2017, a missile flew all the way over Japan. The latest launch, the fifth in a week, has been strongly condemned by South Korean and Japanese officials. North Korea's actions, including the repeated ballistic missile launches, are a threat to the peace and security of our country, region and international community. And it's a serious challenge for our country and the entire international community. People in Japan awoke to messages warning them to take shelter as rocket fragments landed in the Pacific Ocean. It's a serious escalation of military action as North Korea tests its rockets as well as the patience of its neighbors. There are three things you can do, and one is the kind of diplomatic statements you're hearing. We condemn it. Maybe there's another resolution at the at the United Nations Security Council. Um, that goes so far. North Korea's heard them before. It won't have much effect. The second is sanctions. But North Korea is already one of the most heavily sanctioned countries on earth. So that's unlikely. And the third is talk. Whatever Kim Jong-un's intentions, the outcome's already clear. As the international community unites to condemn the action and Japan says it's consulting its allies on next steps. Stephanie Prentice, BBC News. Well, just to give you an idea of the effect the North Korean missile launch had in Japan, this video was filmed on board a bullet train, which was brought to a halt with alarms ringing from what is known as the J-Alert system. The announcement said the service would only resume moving once its safety had been confirmed. And that's the sound of warning sirens in Japan's northern Amori province. Officials in Tokyo said the missiles had a range of 4,600 kilometres. That's 2,850 miles. And that could have been the longest distance ever for a North Korean test flight. Well, the latest missile launch was Pyongyang's fifth in 10 days. Let's get more now from our correspondent, Jean McKenzie, who is in Seoul for us. Um, Jean, Reuters is reporting um, that the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, along with foreign ministers of Japan and South Korea, has strongly condemned North Korea's firing of a ballistic missile, according to a, a US uh, spokesman. Um, how alarming internationally is this? Well, look, as you know, we are getting very used to reporting these North Korean missile launches. They have almost become normalised. This has been a record year for North Korean missile tests. And just last week, we had four instances of these. But today's really does stand apart because it is the first time for five years that they have flown a missile over Japan. So most of their launches this year have been short range missile launches. And even when they have been testing something longer range, they fly in such a way so that it lands in the sea between Korea and Japan for it actually to fly other and other countries' territory is seen as incredibly provocative and it appears that Japan was not given any prior warning that this was going to take place. So you have, as we just heard, people in the northern parts of Japan waking up to the sounds of um, warning sirens and being told to take cover, being told to look up into the sky to check for falling debris. So it is, it is a major escalation on the part of North Korea. Is there uh, any understanding as to why they have done this, why they've escalated in this way? Well, the last time it flew a missile over Japan was back in 2017, and that was really at a period when relations between North Korea and the United States was the worst they had been in years. And we have seen over the past year, sort of going back to some of the things that we saw during that time and tensions increasing. Um, uh, and really, uh, what we've seen is North Korea continuing to test its missiles, to refine its missiles and to build more missiles. And in response to that, we've had South Korea and the United States and Japan taking a much tougher line against North Korea and bolstering their defense as of the region. And that includes taking part in these military exercises all together where they prepare for how they would respond to a North Korean attack. And we saw just last week they took part 
ships out of South Korea, the United States and Japan took part in naval exercises for the first time since 2017. Now we know that these exercises antagonized the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and the last time he flew a missile over Japan he blamed it on very similar exercises. And would the North Koreans have acted without um, at least telling uh, Beijing of, of their intentions, do you think? Is, do we have that information? We don't know that at this stage, but I think the timing of this is interesting because um, one thing that we have been talking about a long t for a long time now is whether or not North Korea is going to conduct what would be an even more provocative test than the one we've seen this morning, a nuclear test. Uh, all the signs, all the intelligence has suggested that it is ready to conduct that test and it is just waiting for the opportune moment. Now, many expected that it was waiting until China had held its Communist Party Congress in a couple of weeks' time so as not to antagonize the Chinese. So this missile launch today, I think, has taken some people by surprise, but many experts now questioning perhaps that nuclear test, if it is going to come, could come sooner than we think. Jean McKenzie, in Seoul, many thanks indeed. Thank you.